If you need help with GED Math Division, this video should make it easier for you. If right now Division is making you feel something like this, then don't worry. By the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to solve problems like this. But let's start with the basics first. 32 divided by 2, and I'd like you to try these throughout the video without a calculator. And I've given you times tables over here if you would like to reference those for twos. Obviously, you won't be given these on your test. But if you'd like to, you could pause the video and try this. But if you just have no idea how to do it, don't worry about it because that's exactly what we are here to learn. Okay, so let's go over how to do this. So the first thing I want to ask is I want to take the two and I want to look at the three. And I want to think, how many times will two go into three? Well, I can see that two times one gives me two. I would say that two goes into three one time. So now I want to take two multiply it by one. Two times one is just two, so I put a two right here. So now what I want to do is I want to do a subtraction, and I don't want to worry about this two or any other numbers, I just want to focus on the three minus two right now. Now three minus two, hopefully you know, is just one, and now what I want to do is take this two, and I'm going to bring this two all the way down here. I now have 12. So the next thing I want to do is I want to ask myself, how many times will 2 go into 12? And if we look over here at our times tables here, we see that 2 times 6 is going to give me 12. So I want to use 6. So I want to put a 6 in right here. So 2 times 6, and I don't do 2 times 16, I just want to do 2 times 6. 2 times 6 is 12, so I just write a 12 down here. And now I want to subtract these two things. 12 minus 12 is just zero. So I don't have a remainder. If this was a one or a two or a three, that would tell me what the remainder was. But there is a zero here, so we don't have a remainder. Now I know these are kind of tricky, so we're gonna walk through a bunch of examples. And I think just trying these yourself and just really just focusing on each step that I do here, the repetition is really gonna help you out. So let's get into a second example. Okay, so the next example is 130 divided by 5, and I have the 5's times tables here. You won't be given these on your test, but for now during practice, it's okay to reference these if you need to, because I would like you to try this without a calculator. So you can pause the video and try this out, and then we'll go over it. So the first question to ask is, does 5 go into 1? 5 does not go into 1, so I'm going to put an X up here. And this is just to tell us that the next number that we write is going to go above the 3 here, just to keep everything lined up, which is really important. And this is a trick that Kate from Light and Salt Learning teaches in her video, The Division Algorithm, and I'm going to put a link to that down below. I highly recommend subscribing to her channel if you're not already for a lot of really helpful GED videos. So I now want to move on from the 1, and I want to look at the 13, the 1 and the 3. So 5 goes into 13 how many times? 5 goes into 13 two times. And I know that because 5 times 2 is 10. 10 is a number that is close to 13, but it's less than 13. So I pick my 2, I put my 2 up here, and note that I have the 2 lined up on top of my 3 here. So now I have to do 5 times 2. 5 times 2 is 10, so I write the 10 down here. Now, do I do anything with the zero yet? Do I bring the zero down yet? No, we don't do anything with that zero just yet. We are just concerned with 13 minus 10. 13 minus 10 is three. Now, I'm gonna bring that zero down. So I'll put my zero right here. The next question I wanna ask myself is, five goes into 30 how many times? Well, we know that five times six is equal to 30. Therefore, we know that 5 will go into 30 exactly 6 times. The next step is to then put the 6 up here like I did and do 5 times 6, which is 30. And I write that right here. And now I'm going to do a subtraction. And 0 minus 0 is just 0. 3 minus 3 is just 0. So the answer to this part of the question is 0. And in other words, we have no remainder. So the answer here is just 26. And again, this X does not appear in the final answer. The X is just there to help us keep track of lining everything up. Okay, so the next example, 77 divided by three. And you can pause the video right now, try to figure this out, and then we'll go over it. Anytime you see something written like this, I would probably just rewrite it right away like this so that it would look like 
like 77 divided by 3 with the 77 is going to go underneath this symbol here and the 3 is going to go outside of it. And so now, as always, we want to think how many times does 3 go into 7? And 3 is going to go into 7 two times. And again, we know that because 3 times 2 gives me 6, which is a number that's close to 7, but it's less than 7. Now I have to do 3 times 2, which we just said was 6. And I dry, draw that 6 down here directly below the first 7. I'm not going to worry about this 7 yet. I'm just focusing on the 7 minus 6 for now. And 7 minus 6 is what? It's 1. Now that I've got that out of the way, I'm going to take this 7 and I'm going to pull this 7 down so I have 17. Now the next question I want to ask myself is how many times does 3 go into 17? And the answer here is 5. Now how do we know that? Well again, if we look at our 3's times tables, we know that 3 times 5 is going to be 15. 15 is a number that's close to 17 but it's not over 17, it's a little less than 17. Now, we don't wanna pick six because that's going to give us 18. Three times six is gonna give us 18, that's not gonna work. So that's why we pick the five here. Now, I write my five up top here, then I do three times five, which three times five is 15, okay? And so now I put the 15 here and we're gonna simply subtract. 17 minus 15 is two. So the final answer after all this, it's just simply 25, remainder two. And this is the answer. All right, here's the fourth example, 318 divided by four. And I actually already rewrote it here for you. So you can pause the video, try this out, and then I'll go over it. Okay, so let's go over how to do this. And so the first question I wanna ask is, does four go into three? And it doesn't. So I'm gonna put, put a little X here like Kate from Light and Salt Learning says to do. I think that's a helpful trick to remember. And so now I want to look at the 31. And I want to think, how many times does 4 go into 31? And I know that if I do 4 times 7, that's going to get me 28, which is close to 31, but it's a little bit less than 31, which is perfect here. So I know that 4 goes into 31 seven times. So now I'm going to put the 7 directly on top of the 1. And 4 times 7 is 28, so I'm going to write that 28 right down here. So now what I have to do, I have to do 31 minus 28. And as always, we're not gonna worry about this eight. We're just gonna leave the eight alone for now. And that's going to give me three. And now what I do is now I take that eight along for the ride. So I bring the eight straight down, which leaves me with 38. And the next question that I wanna ask myself is, how many times does four go into 38? So four goes into 38 nine times. And four times nine is what? Four times nine is 36. And now I have to do a subtraction. So 38 minus 36 is just two. And the final answer here, since I'm left with two, it's gonna be 79 remainder two. And the X again is just here to help us remember how to line everything up here, the X does not appear in the final answer, so I can even scribble that out. Okay, so the next question, it's 9,872 divided by seven. So this is example five, and I'd like you to pause the video, and without a calculator, you can reference these seven times tables over here if you'd like to, but you can pause the video and try to figure this out, and if you get completely stuck, don't worry, because we're just gonna go over it. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is think, how many times does seven go into nine? Seven goes into nine one time. Seven times one is seven, so I write the seven right here. And now I want to just do a subtraction between nine and seven. I don't worry about the eight or any of these other numbers. I just do nine minus seven, which is two. Now I wanna pull the eight down, and I bring the eight down and I have 28. The next question I wanna ask myself is, how many times does seven go into 28? Seven goes into 28 four times. So I put a four right here. Now I have to do seven times four, which is 28. So I write 28 right here. And what's the next step gonna be? Well, hopefully you know the next step is gonna be subtraction. So I do 28 minus 28, which is just zero. Now I wanna pull my seven down. So I put my seven right here. And the next question we wanna ask 
is how many times does seven go into seven? Well, seven goes into seven just one time. So I put the one right here. Seven times one is seven. So I put my seven right here. And simple enough, we now have seven minus seven, which is just zero. All right, now we need to pull that two down. So how many times does seven go into two? Seven goes into two zero times. Seven times zero is zero. So we have to do a subtraction, two minus zero, which is just two. And what do you know? We're left with a remainder of two. And now this is our correct answer. All right, the next example, it's 203,728 divided by 14. And if you can get this question right here, then I would say that you're going to be in really, really good shape for any division question on GED math. So this is a challenging example, but I think it's going to be well worth it. Uh, if you just follow all the steps we've been going over in the last couple examples, you should be able to get it right. So I'll let you pause the video, try this out, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so this one is harder than the ones we've been going over, but it's the same kind of process. Now we've got to look at the 14 here. And we've got to ask ourselves, does 14 go into 2? It does not, so we're going to put a little x up here. Now, does 14 go into 20? Yes, 14 will go into 20 once. So I'm going to put a 1 right here on top of our 0. The next step is to do 14 times 1, which is just 14. So I write 14 here. So I now want to do 20 minus 14, which is 6. Now the next step is to take this 3 and pull the 3 down here. So I have 63. Now the next question I want to ask myself, how many times does 14 go into 63? So the correct answer is 4. And 4 times 14 is 56. And so now the next step, I write the 56 here and I want to subtract. So what is 63? minus 56. Well, hopefully you know that that is 7. So now I want to take this 7 here and I want to pull that all the way down. And I now have 77. So the next order of business is to figure out how many times does 14 go into 77. So what I want to think about is I can look over here at my 14 times tables and you probably don't need to know the 14 times tables off the top of your head um, for the test, but you will need to be able to, if you have to figure something like this out, you would just have to kind of probably write it out like this. Like maybe you would just try to guess and check. Like maybe you do 14 times 5. Let me try that. Well, 5 times 4 is 20. So I'd put a 0 here and a 2 up here. Then 5 times 1 is 5. And then you add the 2, which would be 70. So you might have to do something like this. Like just kind of do it by hand here to kind of figure this out. Unless you really want to memorize your 14 times tables. But I don't think that's going to be worth your time. Anyway, the result that we want is we want to see that 14 times 5 is 70. But 14 times 6 is 84, which is going to be too big. So we are going to put 5 up here above 7. 14 times 5, as we know, is 70. And so I write 70 down here, and I have to do a subtraction. So 77 minus 70 is 7. Now I want to take this 2 and bring this 2 all the way down. And now I have 72. So now the next question is going to be, how many times does 14 go into 72? And the answer, again, is going to be 5, right? Now, 14 times 5, we know, is just 70. So I put a 70 here. Now, what's 72 minus 70? 72 minus 70 is just 2. So I have a 2 here. Now I want to pull this 8 down here. And actually, let me write this out here. So I want to pull the 8 down so I would have 28. So I'm just taking this whole, just really taking this whole thing and putting it up here. So I had that 72 minus 70 is 2. So I put the 2 here from that. Then the 8 I would pull down over here, which would give me 28. And 14 goes into 28 how many times? 14 goes into 28 twice, so that is simple enough. And 14 times 2 is 28, so I'd put that 28 here. And I subtract them, and the answer is just 0. So there's not a remainder here. And after all this madness, the answer is right here. The answer is 14,552. And if you got that really great work...